Well, it's that time of week again when we let our individual paths of life merge into this one sacred time of faith and community. I'm delighted that you're joining us today, that you're joining your heart with mine. So together, let us open our hearts and open our minds and open our spirits as we join together to worship this day. Come, let us worship. Among Paul's letters to the various early Christian community, he wrote to the church in Thessalonia. Paul was unable to go there as much as he had hoped, but sent Timothy to carry forward his message of encouragement and support to the young community of faith. There's some debate about who actually wrote these letters. Was it Paul or was it Timothy? or another one of Paul's followers. Regardless of the writer, we hear these words and let them guide our thoughts in our continued journey today as a community of Christian faithfulness. From Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 3, verses 6 to 13. Now we command you, brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus Christ, to keep away from every brother or sister living irresponsibly and not according to the tradition that they receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not irresponsible when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor we worked, night and day, so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command, Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living irresponsibly, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the name of Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. Holy Wisdom, Holy Word, thanks be to God. Well, it's a delight and a pleasure to be here today to share in this time of worship and reflection. Just coming off of some holiday time, time in the Dominican, time with warmth and sunshine, rest and rejuvenation. I didn't realize how much that I needed that how much that I was tired, weary, and exhausted. It didn't hit me until a couple days after we were away. Maybe it was even on the flight. When I got to still myself, collect my thoughts, and just breathe. To leave behind all that I could leave behind or at least try to. But I didn't leave everything behind. I took a little book with me. I took a little book with me that helped me to write a few things down when my thoughts were, were going through my mind about worship and planning and the days to come. I was amazed that uh, as I sat there one day, and I've shared this story before because it happened before when, when we were away visiting, but sitting there on a lounger next to the pool, I realized how much I calmed down and relaxed. And the most thrilling part of the time when I was away in a previous year was watching a flower unfurl. You ever taken how long it takes for a flower to unfurl? Well, I watched it over several days, actually watching it emerge from a green sprout 
to gradually show a little bit of color and then noticing it throughout the day how a little bit more would show and a little bit more of the color would show and then finally watching the day when when the flower actually emerged and how that was a, a, a sign and a symbol and a, a moment of reflection to calm down, to take time, to rest, relax, and recognize that rejuvenation of many things takes, takes patience and it doesn't come quickly. So if you have an opportunity to watch a flower unfurl, I invite you to do that. Because so often we get caught up in all the activities that are going on in our lives. We get so bombarded with times and schedules and agendas and things that, that require our attention. Searching for answers. Trying to discern, discover, can we do everything we want to do? How can we do everything we want to do? Is there enough time? When Paul was writing to the people of Thessalonia, or whoever wrote these words that are attributed to Paul, Paul was recognizing that, that there's a lot going on within a community, a community of faith, very much like what's going on in our communities of faith this day and in our lives. There's a lot that is capturing our agenda, and, and sometimes we get distracted from what we're doing, and particularly what is good. We sometimes let some of the negative parts of our ministry and our life together as communities of faith to distract us from what we are doing and what we're doing good. And letting some voices that filter into our midst distract us, take us away from focusing, focusing on the ministry that is important in our midst. Doing good is something that Paul was, was reminding the people of Thessalonia to continue to hold on to, to remember and to hold on to that, you know, you still are doing some, some good things. Don't let those voices, don't let those, those side avenues distract you from the path that, that is before you. Recognize that your energy is good and you are to be applauded. Hold on to the good energy. Hold on to the visions. Hold on to the energy that you need to be a follower of Jesus in the world. To share his ministry. To share God's love. And to let the Spirit energize you. We may not always get the opportunity to, to do all good all the time. But we recognize that that we have some good things going on, some good outreach ministries, some good positive steps of moving forward and how to be in relationship with one another and with other communities of faith. And these are really good things for us to, to celebrate, to remind ourselves that, that God is still calling us in this place, in this building, within our communities, to do what we can to make a difference in the lives of others. As we continue to move forward in whatever direction that God is calling us, we're asked to hold on to the blessings of being a community of faith, to hold on and to affirm that we are doing some good things. Take that time to to watch a flower unfurl, to watch a sun gently rise up from the horizon or gently sink at the end of a day. Take those moments to watch and discover the wonders and the beauties of God that are surrounding us in creation and to discover that God is calling us, God is calling you to make a difference in the world in our community, and in the lives around us. I want you to hold on to these words that were gifted to us by Jack Layton just before he died. He said, my friends, 
Love is better than anger. Hope is better than fear. Optimism is better than despair. So let us be loving, hopeful, and optimistic. And together, we'll change the world. So may love, hope, and optimism guide us in our continual discerning of the ways in which the Spirit is leading us to change this place, our community, and the world. You are doing great things. And I give thanks for all of your faithful words, deeds, and actions. Blessings. Amen. Loving God, we thank you for the journey of our lives with its ups and downs, with its questions and challenges, and with its moments of joy. We thank you for the beauty around us, for the hills and the trees, for the water and the weather, for all that reminds us of life and life made new. Today, we are especially thankful for this time of transition in creation. And even though the moments of daylight decreases, and we are fully aware that colder weather, longer nights, and snow will be coming, we move forward with the assurance that after the late autumn days and winter comes the surprises and the blessings of spring. We linger in this season of transition and absorb the beauty surrounding us as a gift and remind us of your constant presence and your ever-changing presence in our lives. And we hold on to hope. In the quiet of this place, in the quietness within these moments of prayer, we offer you our own celebrations, milestones of daily living, the acknowledgement of blessings, and the gifts of life. And for all these things, we say thank you. As we lift our heartfelt thanks, we also offer our deepest pains, griefs, losses, concerns, and prayers that are filled with sighs for others and for ourselves. Sighs that are beyond words. We pray for people living in desert times in their lives, people who are facing famine of body or spirit, people who are tempted to turn away from what is right and just. And we pray for a world, all creatures, all places facing destruction. We remember especially in our prayers and our hearts the people of Ukraine and all countries and nations and people who continue to live in the midst of the threats and the conflicts and the traumas of war. We pray for healing and wholeness and we ask that we would be a part of the solution, loving God, turning our prayerful words into actions. And we take in time and silence at this moment, O oh God. And we offer you our own personal prayers. Prayers for ourselves. Prayers for others. And for the whole of your creation. Through the silence, hear our prayers. Bless our journey. Bless our discerning, letting ourselves be open to the movement of your spirit as she inspires us, O oh God, is a way in which we can let you work through us to be your messengers of love and peace and hope every day. With faithful hearts willing to love and serve, we pray. Amen. My heart is filled with so much gratitude and thanks. I'm thankful for the beauty of the creations surrounding us. 
I'm thankful for the ways in which you continue to bless us with your gifts. Your gifts make a difference to our ministry. Your gifts make a difference to the ministry in which you are involved in. And we have so many ways in which we can offer through our gifts of time, our gifts of talents, and our gifts of treasures. For all the ways in which you continue to bless our ministry, we give thanks. Now, let's give thanks to God through the offerings that we present. It's always a pleasure and a delight for me to share in a time of worship and faith and reflection with a community like ours. As we continue to move forward in the coming days, discovering the ways in which God is calling us to be the church and the Spirit is inspiring us, may we hold on to the words of love, hope, and optimism to guide us in our days ahead as we discover and listen how God is calling us. Blessings to you. Blessings to your congregation, your church, our church. And may the blessings of God be with us. Amen.